Hello and welcome to day three of Lord Teach Me to Study the Bible in 28 Days. Make sure you have got yourself a copy of the book. Details will be uh, below the screen. You also uh, need to have a pen or a pencil and also some simple colouring pencils if you have got them. If you haven't got any, don't worry, just make sure that you've got yourself uh, a pencil. Don't forget to pray. It's always good to pray before we study God's Word. We've already done that, uh, but we're going to get straight into the study. And day three is titled, The Word of God Lost in the House of God. So this is on page 24 of the book. We're going to return to 2 Kings 22 today because it contains so much more for you. And I want you to be absolutely convinced of the importance of knowing God by knowing his word and therefore knowing truth. Yesterday, that's on day two, when you read 2 Kings 22, 1 to 20 and marked the references to King Josiah, you undoubtedly noticed that this chapter is about finding the book of the law which had been lost in the house of the Lord. In fact, you probably noticed quite a few references to the book of the law and to the house of the Lord. These are key phrases that will help us understand more about the chapter. Now, we've already mentioned about uh, key words, and we looked at that on page 16 on day one, and the definition of there of what a key word is, just to remind you, a key word is an important word that helps you unlock the meaning of the text you are studying. So a key phrase does the same thing. So... Okay, so we have an assignment for today, day three, and I'm going to read that through before we then complete what it asks us to do. We're going to colour or underline every reference to the house of the Lord in blue. We're going to mark all synonyms in the same way, as well as any pronouns such as it. In other words, mark every reference to the house in the same way. So that's the first marking we're going to do. We're also going to mark every reference to the book of the law, whether it's simply called it or this book or words which you have heard. Colour each reference green or draw this symbol over it and colour it green. And this symbol is like a little book symbol. That's what is suggested in the book. Um, and then... Uh, when we finish, we're going to look at those references and see what we learn. So let's turn to page 149. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to read through uh, 2 Kings 22. And we are going to mark references to the house uh, of the Lord and also to the book. So here we go. Josiah was eight years old when he became king. And he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedidah, the daughter of Adaia of Bozkath. He did right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the way of his father David, nor did he turn aside to the right or to the left. Now, in the 18th year of King Josiah, the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, the scribe, to the house of the Lord. All right, so we're just going to underline or colour in blue, the house of the Lord. Saying, go up to Hilkiah, the high priest, that he may count the money brought in to the house of the, the Lord. The house of the Lord. Which the doorkeepers have gathered from the people. Let them deliver it into the hand of the workmen who have oversight of the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord. And let them give it to the workmen who are in the house of the Lord, house the Lord. to repair the damage of the house. So, just mark the house. So hopefully you're following along with this. To the carpenters and the builders and the masons and for buying timber and hewn stone to repair the house. The house. Only no accounting shall be made with them for the money delivered into their hands for they deal faithfully. Verse 8, then Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law. Okay, so this is where we need to put that little book symbol uh, or colour it green over the word book, book of the law. Found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And again we mark house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book. So mark the book. To Shaphan who read it. So the it there refers to the book, so we're just going to mark that in the same way. 
Verse 9, Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought back word to the king and said, Your servants have emptied out the money that was found in the house. So the house. And delivered it into the hand of the workmen who have oversight of the house of the Lord. So house of the Lord. Moreover, Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. Okay, so he's going to mark book again. And Shaphan read it, That's it, the book, in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, okay, book of the law again, he tore his clothes. Then the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, Ahiham the son of Shaphan, Achbor the son of Micaiah, Shaphan the scribe, and Isaiah the king's servant, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me and the people and all Judah concerning the words of this book. Okay, book again. That has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that burns against us because our fathers have not listened to the words of this book. Book. To do according to all that is written concerning us. Verse 14. So Hilkiah the priest, Ahiham, Achbor, Shaphan, Asiah went to Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva, the son of Harhas. I'll tell you what, these names are something else, I think you're they? doing really well. Keeper of the wardrobe. Now, she lived in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they spoke to her. She said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man who sent you to me, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I bring evil on this place and on its inhabitants, even all the words of this book, the book, which the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and have burnt incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath burns against this place, and it shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus you shall say to him. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, regarding the words... Now, I so, think that's referring back to the book. So, so we're going to mark, mark the words there in the same way we mark the book. Regarding the words which you've heard, because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before the Lord, when you heard what I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants that they should become a desolation and a curse, and you have torn your clothes and wept before me, I truly have heard you, declares the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will gather you to your fathers. You will be gathered to your grave in peace. Your eyes will not see all the evil that I will bring on this place. So they brought back word to the king. The king. All right, so... Back on page uh, day three, we're just going to continue with the instructions. Yeah, so page 25. So it says here, when you finish, look at every place you marked the house of the Lord. What do you learn about the house of the Lord from marking these references? List your observations below. So again, you might want to put a cloud around list your observations. Um, and by the way, you can go back and just put that cloud around key phrases as well, because and um, that just causes them to really stand out clearly as you're going through the book. So we're going to list our observations. So this listing is what we call an observation tool. So we're going to list what we learn about the key phrase, house of the Lord. So go back to your text, have a look at your markings, and you can see quite clearly where um, it's marked because it's in blue. So what did we learn? Verse three. Okay, so um, I wrote down in the 18th year of King Josiah's reign, mm -hmm. he sent Shaphan to the house of the Lord. Okay, so there's a little space there. So you'd always want to put the verse where you find the information. Um, so that's verse three, and it's and just I'd very write, simply. I'd write quite small as well, because there's a bit of a list here. Mm -hmm. um, so write as neatly as you can, reasonably small, mm -hmm. uh, as we go through uh, and list what we learn about the house of the Lord. So, so in the 18th year, the king sent Shaphan to the house of the Lord. Okay, yeah. good. Next place is where? Okay, the next place we marked it in verse 
4. Mm -hmm. What do we learn? And I wrote down in verse 4, uh, and also verse 5, it goes into verse 5, I said, the money has been gathered from the people mm -hmm. and brought into the house. Okay, so verse 4, the money has been brought by the people uh, into the house. And it's interesting what we learn about the house in verse 5, isn't there? Isn't it? Yeah. Um, I also wrote down here that the workmen have oversight of the house. Mm -hmm. So we see that quite clearly. But also... But, but why? Why do they have well, oversight Well, at the end of, of verse it? 5, it says, that, uh, it says that it's damaged. They're there to repair mm. the damage of the house. So, okay. so the house is damaged. Mm -hmm. So you might like to write something like, it is damaged and the workmen have oversight of it to repair it. Okay. Okay. So it's damaged, the house is damaged, and the, the workmen have oversight to repair it. And by the way, if we're going too fast for you to make your list, you can always pause the video, uh, make your list, and mm. then start it again. So, uh, next place we marked was verse 6, I think. Okay, Did we learn anything more? Or just that, again, um, the house needs repairing. But it's quite important, isn't it, that if you see repetition, to take note of it. So mm -hmm. in two verses, we see that the house has been damaged. We see that it needs repairing. Then in verse six again, uh, we see that it needs repairing. Um, good. Yeah. And I mean, just as we're looking at it and we're slowing down to make our list, you can see that actually you've got carpenters, builders, mm. masons for buying timber. Um, so... It clearly needed a lot of repair. Quite extensive. So the woodwork and the stonework. So yeah. it was damaged, wasn't it? It was severely damaged. Yeah. Okay. So the next place I think we marked was in verse 8. Okay, verse 8. Uh, I simply wrote down that the book of the law was found in the house of the Lord. So quite significant. So verse 8, just out right down there, the book of the law was found in the house um, of uh, the Lord. Okay, good. And then, I think it's verse 9, we, we learn something more, bottom of page 149. Yeah, we found that the money mm -hmm. was found in the house. Okay, good. So money was found in the house. And then again, continuing over the page. And again, it's repeated from what we've already seen, that the workmen yeah. have oversight of the house of the Lord. All right, good. Uh, so can I, think... I, I just want to say something here. Some of you may be um, really detailed people. Um, you know, we find that as we, we encourage people in, in study, don't we? And you want to get every jot and tittle down uh, uh, that we're seeing here. And you may think, hang on a minute, you've missed out this, you've missed out that. But what we're doing is we're, we're trying to focus in on exactly what we're learning about the house and keep it really simple at this stage. Mm -hmm. But there's some really important things that we've learned here that um, clearly it was damaged that it needed repairing, uh, that money had been brought in that was now found, was being used to repair it. Mm. But really significant, we see that that book of the law was found in the house of the Lord. And yeah. uh, Josiah had um, taken it seriously to mm. repair the house. Okay, let's carry on. All right. Now, um, we are now going to move on in halfway down the page there. Now, look at the references that you marked to the book of the law. The Israelites, later known as the Jews, refer to Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy as the Torah, which is the Hebrew word for law. Sometimes they refer to the Torah as the books mm. of Moses or even just Moses, referring to the author. Christians have traditionally followed the Greek translation of the Old Testament, which refers to the same books as the Pentateuch mm -hmm. or the five books. So uh, the question is, what do you learn from marking references to the book of the law? And once again, we're just going to make a simple list going back to where we've marked book or book of the law and see what we learn. So, so let's turn back. First place that we have marked was in verse eight. And we see that actually that the high priest found this book. It says, then Hilkiah the high priest uh, said to the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. So the high priest mm -hmm. found the book, where? In the house of the Lord. And, um, and yep. then we see that Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan who read it. So the book, we, write, we, we learn the book was given to Shaphan um, to read bit by Hilkiah, yeah. by the high priest. So again, write this on your list. Um, uh, there's a little bit more space here. Okay, so 
That was in verse 8. And okay, so and where's nine. the next place that we marked uh, our book? Okay, the book was then in verse 10, actually. Yep. Um, so we see in verse 10 that uh, the king was told about the book. So it says here, um, mm -hmm. Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. So the king was told about the book. Yep. And, and then... What did he do? Shaphan read it in the presence of the king. So you'd want to put that on your list, that the book was read by Shaphan to the king or in the presence of the king. So okay. the king was told about the book and then the book was read to him. Okay. Okay, hope you're getting this down all right. Um, right, where's the next place that we marked book? Verse 11. Yep. So what we learn is that um, when the words of the book were heard by the king, there was a response. The king responded, didn't he? Yeah. So we see he tore his clothes. So you might just want to put uh, on your list, verse 11, when the words of the book were heard by the king, he tore his clothes. And we're going to come on to discuss this in just a minute, aren't yeah. we? So when the words of the book were heard by the king, he tore his clothes. Okay, that was verse 11. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, where's the next place that we marked book? Um, verse 13, I think. Um, and let's see what we learn about the book. So, a number of things we learn here. Hmm. We see that Josiah actually asked, um, sent to inquire of the Lord about the words of the book that had been found. So again, once again, we see that the book was found. So that's yeah. repeated. That's really significant. Yeah. And then we see mm -hmm. towards the end of the verse that Josiah said, our fathers have not listened to the words of this book. So we can learn that our fathers haven't listened to the words of this book, mm -hmm. but also importantly, to do all that is written concerning us. So those words were, were not just to be heard, but they were to be put into practice as well. So um, you mm -hmm. might want to put down here, as I said, was found, the book was found. Our fathers have not listened to do the words of the book, um, but there's something really significant in the middle of this verse, isn't there? Yeah. That as a result of this, great is the wrath of the Lord that burns against us. Why? Because our fathers haven't listened. Yeah. So, therefore, the Lord's great wrath burns against us because the fathers have not listened. Mm. Yeah. So you just need to get those facts down um, on <clears throat> your page. And as Nigel said, some of you may write it in a slightly different way. That's mm. fine. But just try and use words from the text as much as you can. Okay. All right, the next place. What's the next place we mark book? We mark book in verse 16. Um, and we see in verse 16, it says here, Behold, I bring evil on this place and on its inhabitants, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah has read. So actually, you might like to write something like, you know, God brings about mm. the words of the book. God's going to do it. Yeah. God brings about mm. the words of the book, all the words. Now, it's interesting, isn't it? Even evil on this place and its inhabitants. So brings about the words of the book yeah yeah all yeah. the and it's all the words all the words it's not just some of the words yeah. it's all of the words yeah okay so we're just continuing uh, making our simple list on the book I hope you're following along okay with this um, where's the next place we mark book? Um, verse 18 yeah and in verse 18 we marked um, well, I think the, the key fa fact here is that Josiah heard the words. Mm. You know, he heard God's word. Yeah. So it says, says, the Lord God of Israel regarding the words which you've heard. So mm. it's just simple. Um, he Josiah heard the, heard, the word. the words, heard the words of the Lord. And that's so important, isn't it? Mm. How often do people hear God's word? How can they get to know God if they don't hear God's word? Mm. But Josiah heard God's word and... Um, then we see, see. There was a, there was a, <laughs> well, in verse 18, sorry, verse 19, <laughs> it continues on. There is an effect, wasn't there? So the words of the book had an effect on Josiah's life. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, again, you can just <clears throat> put that down in verse 19. The words of the book had an effect yeah. on Josiah. Okay, so <clears throat> we are, um, just a quick recap for this day. We have read through 2 Kings 22. We've marked, picked out two key words. One, the Praises. house of the Lord. 
The other is uh, mm -hmm. the book of the law. We've gone through the text. We've marked those words. Remember, the benefit of marking primarily is it's going to slow you down. You cannot mark words going through the Bible quickly because you have actually got to understand what each word is saying in order to mark it. So it's one of the great benefits of marking. It's an obs what we call an observation um, skill. So yeah. you will see that yeah. it's a way to observe the text, to carefully observe the text, as Nigel says, because it slows you down. You're giving yourself time to really see what is written. And then listing mm. is um, just making um, a list of all the things you learn in one particular place about that keyword, or in this case, this key um, repeated phrase, so that you can then go back and evaluate yeah. um, what we learn. And in fact, <laughs> top of page 26 mm. says this, good job. This is interesting, isn't it? Have you seen anything at this point that confirms the value of knowing God and his word? If so, write it out below. And, and effectively, what we're just saying mm. here is, don't just make your list and close your book and walk away. Mm. Go back and evaluate what you've listed and see what you learn. Think about what you learn. You know, let's go back and just quickly look at it now. We've got two lists. We see that the house was damaged we see that it needs repairing. We see that money was in the house and that Josiah used that money to repair the house, that the workmen were given oversight over it. Okay. So they were in charge, um, they were uh, entrusted with and in charge of repairing the house. But key, we see that the book of the law was found in the house of the Lord. And as a result of that, we then marked the word book of the law yeah. And we see that it was interesting, it was the high priest that found it. I know. So it was I... the high priest that found <laughs> the book of the law in the house of the God, in the house of the Lord. And therefore, the book must have been lost. Yeah. For it to have been found, it must have been lost. And it's mm. very interesting, isn't it, that the high priest is the one who actually found it. Yeah. And so he then um, sent um, and Shaphan read the book to the king and we see that the word of God had an effect on King Josiah. Yeah. We see that when the book of the Lord um, was heard, he tore his clothes. There was a response mm. and he said, um, our fathers haven't listened. He took God's word seriously, didn't he? He said, therefore the Lord's great wrath burns against us. And he was very concerned, so he went to inquire of the Lord. So you're thinking all the time, gosh, isn't that interesting? The book was lost, now it's found, yeah. it's been read. Having heard the book, he's now um, doing something about it. So evaluate your list. Now Nigel's got some really exciting, I think, observations, well, I was haven't just, you? I was just really... Um I guess convicted myself when I read this and, and I've just, I just want to share with you um, and we can discuss it as we go along just some things that I saw uh, just going through marking the house and mm. marking the book. So the first thing is that I wrote down and you may want to write these down uh, on that page there where you've, got, where you've got some space. I wrote down the word of God convicts. Mm. The word of God convicts because we saw that when um, Josiah heard it, he tore his clothes. So that so, was an outward response of something that was going on within him. Yeah, mm. it convicts. And, and also the word of God reveals our sin. It reveals what we're currently doing, but what God would have us to do. Um, and so I wrote down that it, it reveals our sin. And we see that here, Josiah mm. saying, you know, our fathers have not listened yeah. to do uh, according to all the words of mm. the book of the law. So it reveals our sin. The other thing that I saw here, maybe you did too, was that it actually drove Josiah to do something about it. Mm. He didn't just hear it and said, oh, that's nice. Uh, he actually did something about it. Um, so it drove him to action. Uh, and that action was a move to get right with God. Mm. He wanted to get right with God. He wanted to inquire. Um, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He did. So, so there are lots of things. So make sure that you go through um, the lists again and write out the things that you're seeing. Mm. We don't want to take out all the joy away from you. You spend some time just looking back at the text, look at your lists and write out um, the things that confirm the value of knowing God and his word. And as Nigel said, knowing God's word brings conviction. It brings um, that sense of, of 
having done something sinful before the Lord and it brought about a response and an action, didn't it? Yeah. Well, we've come to the end of day three. Uh, thank you for joining us and don't forget, join us um, for day four where we're going to continue to show you how you can study God's word for yourself and discover truth. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Bye for now.